Ponce de Leon's Don Juan Ponce de Leon, his great landing somewhere on the Florida coast. 30 degrees, 8 minutes, it was documented. So the only documentation we have in print says that. So here we are at 30 degrees, 8 minutes with Ponce coming ashore. And now we're going to unveil statuary to commemorate this for the future. The men of Menendez, a company of the Store Florida Militia, is here in force. We have one of the Ponce family here representing Ponce himself. So, Jimmy Ponce, James Ponce. This whole entire project was done with donations and volunteers. Every single bit of it. This was a serious grassroots uh, effort on the part of the public. Officials from the city of St. Augustine who got very excited. They just never dreamed that this whole event was going to be this wonderful and this down to earth and about what really happened here. We so appreciated Brian Bowman and the 16th century garrison that all along, all through the day, helped us. They not only were the reenactors on the beach, but when it came time to make sure everybody safely got across the highway, which uh, was a serious logistical problem in this case, uh, they were wonderful. They were there, they stopped traffic, and then when it came time to do the presentation, they were there for that also. May the blessings of heaven extend to our continued ventures. The park and the Visitors Information Bureau, they had a great part in pulling that drapery off. A lot of the crew of the Espiritu who helped volunteer uh, the labor up here on the pedestal, there were about a hundred of them uh, were on the beach. The whole idea for this whole location and for the statue was on April the 2nd, Ponce de Leon sighted and took a measurement for the 30 degrees point eight, and that's when he landed and that's when he named La Florida and it's also really important uh, because that was the first northern European to claim this continent for a, another country for Spain you know Christopher Columbus never made it beyond the Caribbean people have kind of forgotten or just didn't know so when this 500th anniversary of his coming ashore uh, started to come around and get closer, we felt like we should celebrate it. Uh, and the people on the beach, the fellow that played Ponce Leon was a descendant of Ponce Leon. His name was Jimmy Ponce. And we were very glad to have him uh, take part in that reenactment. And the fellow, there was a fellow there with uh, navigational instruments, taking measurements, and he was sort of uh, representing Alamiris, who was uh, Ponce's navigator. And this fellow specializes in antique uh, nautical 
measuring devices and he had a very old one that day on the beach. So uh, that was a very important part of the whole day. It was a way to start the day with his landing at 12 o'clock, which according to the records, that was the time. This spot is important because this is the only place where we have a historical document. It's called the Herrera account. The Herrera account is a translation from Spanish into English of Alamira's log, actually from Ponce's ship. And it documents and it says 30 degrees point eight. It says the depth of the water. It says how far out they were. This is the only historical document that substantiates any site in the state of Florida. And this is as close as you can come to it. The park, they opened their arms. They were so gracious. Uh, the volunteers, everybody did everything that they were asked to do. They volunteered to do things they weren't asked to do. It was all in the spirit of the occasion. Dan, yeah. if you will, tell Bruce how the whole idea, whole conception of this whole plan came about. What started it? Everybody thinks it was my idea. It was Jack Williams. Jack was the person basically that did all the research for Fort, for Fort Moza. Jack was uh, the, the person that did all the research and really saved the Fort Moza site for the state of Florida, which is now a park uh, just north of St. Augustine and US-1. Jack had also done quite a bit of research on Ponce de Leon, and he was the one that actually uh, was the person that figured this all out. I knew absolutely nothing about it. Uh, my friend Dan Holliday had been down to the uh, uh, Sanford Foundry and seen their work. He had been down uh, to the American Bronze Factory in uh, Sanford, Florida for a whole nother purpose. And while he was there, he saw photographs of a statue of Ponce de Leon. And that's what sparked the whole idea. And he talked with the owner of the foundry at that time and said, what, what are the possibilities of us doing a statue like that? And he said, well, you first of all have to buy the rights or pay for permission to use, use their material. And so at that point, he uh, scouted around to see if he could find a location. He also needed a donor. He had this great idea for 30.8, but he didn't have a site and he didn't have a donor. And there were several that came forward and at, for whatever reasons decided to drop out. And I was at the point where I realized uh, he had a real fire and he really, really thought that this was important that this be done. And I felt like it was important uh, that we celebrate our 500th anniversary in some way. We needed to commemorate it. And so I said, well, Dan, I said, if nobody else will come forward, I will, I will be your donor. And so at that point, we went down to the foundry and we talked with the owner and uh, arranged to buy the rights to use the mold for this particular statue, which had been produced for Ponta Gorda. Because as you well know, Ponce landed here first. Uh, then he landed, and it's a very controversial, he landed somewhere down near Canaveral. Then he went around the tip of Florida and he went to Punta Gorda. And he landed, he went to Punta Gorda three times. And so it was very appropriate for a statue of Ponce to be there. However, on his third or fourth visit, he, the Indians were not happy with them. And he got hit in the leg with a poisoned arrow and he died. Uh, from that injury and ended up being buried in Cuba.
So we went down, we looked at it, and we thought it, it looked really good. We were, thought this is just exactly what we need to do. And we proceeded with the project. And we used Charlie Wombaugh for guidance along the whole way. And his advice was invaluable. Uh, they, they poured the statue uh, months in advance. Uh, we went down after he was done and watched him. Uh, he, they put him together. He's done in sections and watched them uh, do the patina because I wanted to have some feedback and the color that he, he was going to be eventually. I didn't want it to be uh, artificial looking. I wanted to have some input into the patina. I wanted it to look like natural bronze and I also felt really strongly about it aging like natural bronze because after all it was going to be in the uh, reserve and it's all about the environment and I wanted him to age into that green patina that would uh, I felt like would be more appropriate for this location. And so what they did was they put a coat of wax on him. And the wax, the idea is that the wax will gently come off in random places and then he'll be exposed and then the patina will start. The astrolabe has an arm on, on the front of it that swings from zero to 90 degrees in both directions. All right, at noon time, you want to go out on the deck and you want to look up at approximately noon and hold this up in the air at your eyesight and look through their two holes, one in the front and one in the rear. You would look up at the sun, but you can't look very long at it because you would burn your eye up. So what happens when the sun hits its zenith, that means the highest point in the sky, it appears to stand at one position for about four seconds. So as I'm holding this, looking up at the sun and peering through the pen and keeping the sun in there, it will stop all of a sudden. And when it stops, it doesn't appear to move because it moves very quickly. I will hold this fast and then I will get the angle of the sun at that time on the face of the astrolabe. The degrees are marked on the face of the astrolabe. You can't see them very well on there because it's very difficult. But if you would look over here, I'll take this board. You'll see degrees here. And this is called a Halley's Quadrant, which is a later device, but it has the same degrees written on it, but they're easier to read. These are so indented into the surface that you can't even pick it up with a camera. But real close examination, you could see the degrees and we would be doing the same thing with this instrument called Halley's Quadrant. Look up at the sun at the four seconds when it stops, and when it stops we would hold this fast and then we'd have the angle of the sun. I think what a lot of people 
course couldn't possibly realize is with this whole project we went right down to the wire. Uh, we were here the Saturday before Easter installing him. Uh, he was delivered by the foundry uh, from Sanford, Florida and uh, installed on that day and while he was here they had a very quick run through on on the drapery. Everybody was concerned about the drapery and whether it was going to catch on a hand or catch on his sword and uh, we were very pleased to pull that part of it off successfully. On the way, uh, Charlie from the foundry uh, guided us the whole way about we needed to wait till the last minute to install him because he said he did not need to be sitting out here for a month or two in advance. He said too much can happen. Uh, so we went right down to the wire and uh, he installed him the Saturday before Easter and that was quite a day I have to tell you. Uh, a forklift and I thought it would be a little tiny thing and we had this huge piece of machinery and he came wrapped up like a samurai swordsman with all the padding on him. You didn't even know who he was when he came out of the truck. And uh, it took them most of the day to install him. Of course, the pedestal came before the statue and we had a fabulous group of volunteers and people who donated material uh, for the base. Uh, I, think it, I think it turned out fabulous. Uh, and they too finished <laughs> just under the wire, which was also the advice that was given us because the whole idea is we wanted it to be as fresh as it could possibly be for April the 2nd. And uh, the fellows that, that rigged the, uh, the uh, silk fabric over him and tied the big red bow on him, I cannot tell you how they sweated that whole thing, whether that was going to come off or whether it was going to catch on the statue someplace. But as you saw, it just came off beautifully, just floated right off. And I thought it was wonderful. We're here today. We heard about this on the local news that they were having a reenactment of the landing of Ponce de Leon and the discovery from the Europe continent of La Florida. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bring the grandkids and just have some fun at the beach. 500 years is a, a long time to have the naming of Florida. So it's kind of a special event. I've been hearing about this for uh, a long time and I'm just excited about it. Well, when you look at the map, you see 30 degrees here. 30 degrees goes through this park. That's pretty interesting. But I've, I've got a collection of, of antique maps. Probably Candy will bear me out. A pretty pretty interesting collection. Of, a lot of maps. And I'm into this stuff. I've got a map from 1562. And that the, it actually was a copy of a map in 1542. Now that's not too far from when this happened. And it's absolutely and totally nails the Tropic of Cancer. Just north of Cuba and south of the Florida nails it. They knew where things were. They didn't know too much how far east they were, how far west, but they sure knew latitude. And latitude on this astrolabe, that's what they did. That's what he was known for. And when anybody doubts that, they don't know what they're talking about. Did you, did, did, did you, on these did you concentrate much, on the fact that when Ponce got here, this is basically what he saw? Right. I think that is that is is the cornerstone of this whole thing. We we were offered several other locations that would not have been appropriate. And this to me, that's got to be the way it looked. And of course he was at sea and you were telling me before these dunes are higher than yeah. If you go if you go up and down, whoa, there's a beautiful hawk. Uh, if you go up and down the coast of Florida, there's very very few places on the coast of Florida that have any topography. Ponte Vedra is one of them. You can go from here all the way down to the Cape, Cape Canaveral, 
and there isn't that much as a shell mound down in New Smyrna. But if you were offshore and they were uh, one league offshore is three miles. That's where you get the three mile limit from. And they were three miles offshore. They saw this bunch of dunes. Now the dunes get a little higher north of here. Of course, houses have knocked them down. But this is the way it was. I'm, I'm sure, as I stand here, that this is just about what he saw. And uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a miracle to me that it, this is here this way. It's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely and that's a big news amazing. To me. Come and see what it looked like. It's not, it's not downtown St. Augustine. With it, this is La Naturelle, and uh, and it is it is the most appropriate place that that statue could have been ever been yeah, put. Yeah. Is right here. You look out here, and that's exactly what he saw. This is what they saw, and this is what has been preserved. We can celebrate this now. This history. And what you're going to see today is all of the effort made by so many in our local community, goodness and kindness, Candace, uh, by local community businesses, by high schoolers, all coming together so that we could mark the day and the time and the story for future generations. I had never actually stopped at this site. I had been by it many, many, many times, but never stopped. And when we walked up to the overlook, I was stunned. I couldn't believe the pristine beauty of this piece of property. And you've got to realize, you go up there and stand up there and you turn 360 degrees, it's all beautiful, unspoiled land, and it was that way when Ponce de Leon landed. That's what uh, is so miraculous to me about it, that the, the site is still here and it's just as it was. And you can't say that about too many places. So that was to me very exciting. And I still go up there and I still can't get over what a beautiful site it is. And uh, I never fully appreciated the reserve and what they've been doing. Uh, but they really deserve credit for this being here. And without them, uh, the statue would have never had a proper home. I know all by these presents that I, Don Juan Ponce de Leon, have this day on the 2nd of April, in the year of our Lord, 1513, sighted new land located at 30 degrees 8 minutes north latitude and have taken possession of same land in the name of the most Catholic Majesty, Ferdinand II, King of Castile and Leon. I have named this new land La Florida in recognition of its venture in our holy festival of flowers, honoring the resurrection of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All the gentlemen of our expedition, including our chief pilot, Anton de Alaminos, have been concurred in these findings and attest to their truth and accuracy. May the blessings of heaven extend to our continued ventures. Viva la Florida! Viva!